FAC 3704 Group Financial Reporting. Our focus area today is on Learning Unit 2, and we'll focus on intergroup transactions. The focus on intergroup transactions will be transactions on loans and also management fees. So the first thing is to get to understand what the standards require from us, and that will be referred to in IFRS 10 B86, specifically 6. In this standard, uh, the explanation is on the consolidation, consolidation procedure. Basically, it says eliminate, eliminate in full intergroup assets and liabilities, equity, income, expenses, and cash flows relating to transactions between entities of a group. In brackets, it says profits or losses resulting from intergroup transactions that are recognized in assets, such as inventory and fixed assets, are eliminated in full close bracket. Basically, what this is trying to say is that if there are transactions between companies in a group, what needs to be taken into account is to eliminate the transactions entered between the two parties. And in the process, you need to eliminate any assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenses, and cash flow for the from the transactions between the two parties of the group. So in this video, we'll focus mainly on the elimination affecting the assets, affecting liabilities, income, and expenses. Equity and cash flow will not be explained. So I'll break down the explanation further by discussing the principle behind the standard. Before I get to that, I would like to urge you to go back to the standard and read A and B of IFRS 10 B86. This will help you in order to understand better the consolidation procedures which are required by the accounting standards. So basically the principle on part C is that you cannot enter into a transaction with yourself. And in this instance, whenever you enter into a transaction with yourself, which is the group entering into a transaction with itself, then you need to eliminate. The reason behind that is because the two transactions, when you look in the financial statements or when you look on the journals, the two transactions will technically be a mirror image of the same transactions. And... In the group perspective and because of the accounting standard, this has to be eliminated because basically the two companies are now in the same group or are seen as one. And the fact of the matter is that you cannot enter into a transaction with yourself. So here is an example. This example will zoom into the loans as explained earlier. So in this instance, this is a loan that was given by the parent to the subsidiary. So the parent gave the subsidiary a loan of 500,000. So if you look on the first journal entry, basically this is the recording of the loan in the parent's group where the loan recognized the assets of the loan and the bank in terms of the cash outflow that came out because of this transaction. And the subsidiary receives the income, which they recognize the debit bank there, and then they credit the loan due to the liability. When we get into the elimination, basically the loan of the parent and the loan of the subsidiary is now eliminated. Basically, like we said, this is a mirror image and all those transactions are now gone and not recognized in the consolidated financial statement. So the principle behind that is that the elimination of the intergroup balances, which is the 500,000, ensure that the asset and the liability are not overstated per the individual line item as disclosed for the purpose of the consolidated financial statements. So, 
for NCI's perspective, remember this is eliminated. Basically, there's no recognition there. And therefore, NCI is not taken into account because NCI does not have any interest in the above transactions. The other thing with reference to this is basically the tax. Remember, there's no tax implication when it comes to the loan received by the subsidiary and the loan paid by the parent in both instances. So there's no income tax or defect tax implication. So for every loan, remember, there's an interest uh, income and also there's a finance expense. Please take into account the explanation on the previous slides when it comes to the individual groups. So the 50,000, which is the annual interest of the 500,000 loan in the elimination of the consolidated journals will have an implication of debiting in finance income, which is the elimination of the income that was previously recognized in the parents group and crediting the finance expense, which is also an elimination in this instance. The elimination of intergroup transactions ensure that income, which is the parent's income expense, which is the subsidiary expense of the group, are not overstated per individual line item for disclosure purposes in the consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Remember the explanation I explained earlier about NCI will also be the implication here no nci because the elimination basically all the amount is eliminated and not there in the consolidated financial statement therefore no nci implication in terms of deferred tax there is no difference between how the accountant will have recognized the tax and also how sars would have recognized so there's no temporary difference because basically there's no a temporary difference between the two in terms of how the accountants would have recognized and also how SARS would have recognized the two transactions. There's no deferred tax implication on the income, finance income and the finance expenses, mainly because there's no temporary difference in terms of how the accountant would have recognized the tax implication and also how SARS would have recognized it. Hence, no deferred tax implication then. Then the second thing that I promised to touch on or the second thing we need to address in this video is the management fees. So the example here is that the subsidiary performed management services on behalf of the parent and charges a management fee. The management fee amount is 70,000. So, so in this instance, the parent incurs an expenditure which is paying the subsidiary for performing a specific service, which is the management services on their behalf. And also, the subsidiary will receive an income because of the service that they have actually performed on the parent's behalf, which gives into implication other expenditure on the perspective of the parent and also other income in the subsidiaries books. So when we come to eliminating, what will happen is that we will need to debit the other income, which is the 70,000 received by the subsidiary and credit other expenses, which are the expenses incurred by the parent. That is the elimination of the intergroup management fees. So the elimination of the intergroup transactions ensures that the income, which is the income received by the subsidiary and the expenditure of the group are not overstated per individual line item for disclosure purposes in the consolidated statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. As discussed earlier, when it comes to NCI, remember, this is an intergroup transaction. The two transactions have been eliminated, meaning NCI does not have any interest in those transactions. And because of that, there's no implication on NCI. 
And also from a deferred tax perspective, we will not take into account deferred tax, mainly because there is no temporary difference between what us as accountant would have taken into account in terms of accounting of this transaction and also what SARS would have taken into account. Therefore, no deferred tax implication. Remember, no NCI and deferred tax implication on the above transactions. Thank you. All the best with your exams. We wish you all the best for your exams and we hope that the preparation during the last few days will help you pass your exams thank you again